The World Health Organization says it's going to take time to get a full picture of the threat posed by Omicron, the new COVID-19 variant first identified in South Africa. The World Health Organization is warning the virus mutation is likely to spread internationally and poses a very high risk of infection. The director general of the international health body says its emergence showed how perilous and precarious the situation still is. Countries around the world are moving fast to assess the health risk and put measures in place. Speaking after a meeting of G7 health ministers, Sajid Javed said they all agreed for the need to strengthen defences. We were unanimous in our praise for the leadership shown by South Africa, who were so open and transparent about this new variant. And we were resolute in our commitment to working closely with each other, the World Health Organization and, of course, the wider international community to tackle this common threat. Our experience of fighting this virus has shown us that it's best to act decisively and swiftly when we see a potential threat, which is why we're building our defences and putting these measures in place without delay. Let's now cross the line to Brussels to our correspondent Shona Murray. Shona, thanks for being on the programme. Uh, so Omicron cases being identified all over Europe. Some countries we're seeing they are now closing their borders to South African countries, but still so many unknowns, unknown variables when it comes to this new variant. Yeah, that's the thing. We obviously we're we're looking to hear over the next few days and weeks as to how infectious this new variant is, whether it triggers more severe symptoms, uh, and whether it evades in any way the vaccines or the, if, or how strong the vaccines are in deterring it. Um, so obviously those things are really important, and we're hoping to hear more about that in the next in the next while. But for now, uh, we've seen in Europe uh, measures being taken. As we know, southern, several countries from Southern Africa um, not being able to come into Europe. But even other countries within the EU, Portugal, for example, is now insisting that everybody has a negative PCR test going into the country and using facilities like restaurants, clubs and bars while there, regardless of whether they've been vaccinated or not. And obviously, that's a bit of a concern for the European Commission because the whole point of the EU's COVID search was that everybody works uh, in unison and that people who are vaccinated shouldn't have any additional restrictions. So the Commission is looking, about, looking at that in relation to its proportionality and whether it fits the spirit and the rules of the COVID cert because obviously we know that the Commission during the week extended the length of time of the COVID cert to allow for booster shots. All right, thank you so much, Shona. That was our correspondent, Shona, there, giving us the latest there from Brussels. Joining me now is Professor Helen Rees, an international vaccine expert in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, Professor Helen Rees, thanks so much for being um, on your news tonight. Now, South Africa has felt unfairly treated over this new variant, um, but G7 ministers today praised their fast response. So how has South Africa identified and flagged this variant so fast? Can you take us through it? Yes, well, it was first picked up by laboratories that were doing routine testing to identify whether people had COVID infection or not. It's called a PCR test. And what they noticed was that that PCR result was looking different to those that they'd been standardly, standardly reading. And, and uh, these people very quite correctly thought this could be a new variant. And after that, there, were gen there was genomic sequencing. And that confirmed that there was a new variant. But I think importantly, um, the scientists responded extremely rapidly to let the world know that this was what was identified. Um, but uh, that hasn't gone down well in some quarters. And I think that we do have to continuously reinforce the importance of sharing science and data as quickly as possible in the context of this pandemic. Exactly. But so do you think the panic then over this Omicron variant has been warranted? I think when any new variant arises, that we have to be very, very cautious worldwide. We are going to see new variants. Um, and from this region, the African region, we've been saying this to the world for a long time. If you don't vaccinate this region and we don't get vaccines not only into countries but uh, available to populations, we'll continue to see new variants. Now, we're all hoping that this variant that we're still trying to understand doesn't cause more severe illness. It does seem to be transmissible. And it does seem that some people are being reinfected who previously had had COVID with another variant. But we're hoping that we're not going to see more severe illness. But if we don't get vaccination coverage up equitably across the world, 
the, the risk is that we will eventually get a variant that's completely resistant to vaccines and that could possibly cause more severe illness. So a huge risk there. But in your opinion, I mean, you're someone that's worked very actively on the global response um, to COVID-19. Um, the science isn't quite there, as, as you were saying as well, um, on the Omicron variant. But how much of a risk does it pose if compared to other variants and what we know so far? Well, I think there, there are a few risks. One is that it does appear to be very transmissible. Whether it's more transmissible than Delta, we'll, 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 we're yet to see. But it does appear to be very transmissible, which means that it spreads very easily b between people. The second thing, as I said, is that it does appear that there are cases of infection in people who previously had had COVID infection. And this suggests that the antibodies that you get from natural infection aren't protecting you. And that's our concern about vaccines. Will the vaccines be effective against this new variant? We're all hopeful that it will be, particularly against severe disease and hospitalization, because with all the other variants, we have seen that vaccines have retained their effectiveness. But that's the critical question, because vaccines are our greatest weapon at the moment to stop this pandemic. So obviously the, the question over the vaccines is still unknown. Now, the G7 approach today is to let um, science investigate. It's a measured approach. But what would your advice be to people? Uh, how precautious should they be when it comes to this new variant? I think, uh, you know, it, everyone should be very cautious. Clearly, uh, different countries have, um, have become more or less liberal with their sort of routine public health measures. But now, especially with the transmissibility and the unknowns that we have about the variant, wearing masks is absolutely essential. Now, it's difficult in the European region because you're going into winter, but at least trying to avoid crowded indoor spaces and staying in ventilated spaces. These kinds of things are extremely important. But mask wearing, distancing, all the things we know about, those are our big tools, plus being vaccinated. We still believe that be extremely important in the context of this new variant.